perfect. Hey guys, I'm Dan, the amazing Gavin Pritzlew. Okay, Gavin, over to you, my friend, the first one of your poems today. Thanks, Andy, appreciate it. Um, this piece is called An Imperfect Image. Um, it is from my fourth volume of poetry of Pieces of My Mind. Um, the title of that particular volume is called Philosophy and Sharp Stones. It basically gives an idea into my personal life. An imperfect image. Soft upon the eyes. A fleeting moment memorized within a blink. Unfocused. An unresolved image forever captured imperfectly, burnt into the retina, and absorbed into an unknown portion of a blurred thought. Yet the beauty, though distorted, dissolves into this moment. Astral colors faded, but saturated into the reality of sight and memory. A pastel montage of imperfection. And in that moment, as the sensitive iris is distended into a pinpoint of immortality by an eye-lidded blink, the understanding is realized that the beauty of reality is as beautiful as the blur of an imperfect memory. Fantastic. Fantastic indeed. And what made you want to write this poem? Then? What was the inspiration around this poem? I was actually sitting thinking about how we perceive our memories and how we always tend to think of the negative. I've had a hard life. I'll, I'll tell you straight. Um, emotionally as a kid and as an adult as well. I won't pull punches. I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, I've made a lot of bad errors of judgment. And in a way that tends to cloud our appreciation of the present, the, the beauty of the present. Mm. We, we tend to see everything behind us in a fog of bad. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. No, it yeah. does, mate. It does, mate, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we rather recollect the, the troubled part of our lives and we don't recollect the beautiful, those little moments of beauty. All right. Even a lot of what I've tried to say, a, a lot of the things that have happened to us, like talking about the lockdown, that was horrendous. But within that, there was a kernel of hope that was born out of it. There was a there was a change born out of it, which was beautiful. The lockdown was terrible, but the results of the lockdown in some cases was truly beautiful. And we don't see that. We tend not to see it. We harp on those things that continually press us down. We see everything as a blur in the past. We can't sit back and say, oh, I remember that day. That was such a beautiful day. You'd rather think that happened to me on that day and that day and that day. Oh, terrible time. And that's human nature for some reason. And uh, I thought I just had to try and express that, that contrast. That is a contrast between how we perceive the past, our memory, and our current reality, and how we have overlooked those realities that we could have enjoyed in the past, but don't because we're so focused on the negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. Have you found, as you obviously, with you having such a massive burst of your poetry, so you said you would be writing for a couple of years, but as you wrote so much. How's the way you are not using all the time period on this? Do you look back at some of your early work that you've been pulling off Facebook recently from a couple of years ago and are amazed at what you're writing now in contrast to then? Do you think it's changed as a person or have you changed as a person? Yes. To me, it's a growth process. I have seen the growth process. Um, in fact, um, a gentleman by the name of Jeff, Jeff Stockton, one of the poets, one of the groups, he, he made the comment the other day, he goes through my work and he sees, he can see the growth in my poetry compared to what it was like in 2020 to what it is now. It's like worlds apart. Um, and I actually do take cognizance of that fact, because I'm aware inside as well, mentally and emotionally, that there has been a growth. 
there, there has been a development. I am, I have formulated my own style. I, I live by my own style. I've created my own way of doing things when it comes to writing. And a lot of people like it. And I, I like expressing, I don't, I don't like just writing like this poem. It's not just a case of writing a poem. It's something deep. It's something integral that is that's inside that needs to come out, an expression that needs to be put down. That's what drives me. Like I said before, that is my driving focus. Uh, it is the, in, the incredibly oh, intense need to get it out. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? To me, it's like a weight being lifted off me. When I've written it down and it's out of it, I sit back and I sigh, and I'm telling you that God's honest truth. I sit back in that chair and I sigh with relief. It's like somebody's lifted a load off my shoulders. And very often it's stuff that's been, look, I, I'm bipolar. There's a lot of things that that I've got to make sense of that don't make sense to other people, okay, or, or make perfect sense to other people that don't make sense to me. So if I can enunciate something, if I can describe something that's going to put the world in focus for me, if that I can understand my emotions, I can understand other people's emotions, I think that 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 warrants the term growth because I would never have been able to do that before. Yeah, no, I get you completely. No, I do agree with you. I do agree with you on that one. So, I think as a writer, you've always got to be constantly evolving anyway. And I think exactly. you're definitely that. So, okay, we could be here, we could be here all night. So, we better get onto your little <laughs> piece, Gavin. Definitely, buddy. So, over to you again, mate, for poem number two. All right. Um, this piece will be from uh, my book I'm doing with Alta, the Secure Publishers, called Dripping Light. It's a book about dawn. Different. Sorry about the dog bark in the background. She's <laughs> lighter. Um, it's called The Eye of Dawn. All these poems have got that word in it, in the title, Dawn, whatever the description is. The Eye of Dawn. A gay caresses a soulless dream, though the flesh may be awake. A gaze intent upon the window of the soul, till my eyes its gaze will break. A gentle breeze caresses the skin, like fingertips of the finest silk. Night fades, as time lends itself to its scrutiny, in a glow as white as milk. That would be the backdrop of the sky in the morning. The eye beholds what lies before it, as far as it can see. Here, there is no temptation upon a mountain. There is only what was meant to be. As the gaze erases doubt with fire, I hear the birds greet with a tired song. Upon the horizon, they call to life itself seek the reason why they belong. Called by the future, the old ascends. In memory, it carries away a bygone age. Yet today is no different from ages past. For as the sun sinks in blazing glory, it will turn a blank page. Oh, God, that engine is really, really tender, that relation to a blank page. And that was, yeah. it's like you lifted beginning things of off. Day. Yeah, beginning a new day, or you're returning back to the beginning. I think it's, could be taken either yes. way, that ending. And that's beautiful. Absolutely. Such a beautiful, yeah, tender sure. poem, that one. So that'll be, yeah. And I don't doubt it, the rest, the rest of that book, well, that quality as well. And that was absolutely sublime, that was definitely so. It really, that's really shit. touching. Did you write that one? No, what, actually, what, did you actually write that at the beginning of the day? Did you? It feels like it. I'll you... tell you. I'll tell you what what happened. Um, mm. <laughs> this is another story. <laughs> Please do, mate. One morning, I, I couldn't sleep. It was about half past five in the morning, and we have, we've got a lovely garden outside there. It's my other passion is gardening, and my safe place. And I, I made a cup of coffee and I went to go sit outside. It was around about half past five, quarter to five, and the sun was just starting to come up. And I looked at that and I thought, you know what? Every day is so much the same, but yet intrinsically so different. Every dawn 
is the beginning of a new day. But every dawn is also a blank page because that day hasn't been experienced yet. So why don't I write a book about it? I thought, now, if I can do that, how can I do it? I said, okay. I will take 100 mornings. And I will get up at sunrise. And I'll go sit in the same spot with my cup of coffee and I'll watch the sunrise. I'll take a photo of it with a date and time. That's going to be in the book. That photo is going to be there with a date and time. Yes. And I will try to describe the emotion that that view gave me at that specific moment, that, that momentary burst of, of expression. I'm going to try and capture and see what it says to me. Now, I have an incredible love of dragons. A fable, okay, and you'll find in a lot of those dragons be referred to as bringing the sun alive and pulling it up out of the horizon. Okay, I will work that into my poems as well. A little bit of mythology, so I have tried to keep it as true to form at an emotional level, but also try to add a little bit of imagination just to keep it spicy. Okay, people don't want to see the same thing over and over and over again. So each poem is of a different subject, containing the word dawn, um, and trying to express what I feel at that specific moment of time. Brilliant. No, good luck with it, definitely. I look for, I definitely look forward to reading that book. When you're ready, you're ready to go. So I'm, keeps really. I'm, I'm looking forward to publishing it. It's, you feel like it when you're talking to you today. Yes, and you can feel you've got that energy about you there, definitely. And it's, yeah, good luck, man, definitely with it, so. Right, well, anyway, unfortunately, that is it for today, guys and girls. I want to give Gavin a big thank you today. Yep, and as I, I had a feeling when I first started talking today, I said along, Gavin is a great name, and we've had another, I've met my second great Gavin now, ever now. So thank you today, Gavin. It's been a pleasure, my mate. Pleasure. Definitely, mate. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I hope, definitely. You get, I hope you get over that cold quicker. I am getting over it. So I'm getting better than I was last week, certainly. So we'll definitely have you on there again in the future. I promise you that. So maybe a Volta oh, next time it. as well. Just so me and you can wind up Volta between us both, because I know exactly <laughs> I know exactly how the team so tease Alter. So but anyway, we'll deal with that another day. Listen, mate, hang around anyway, because I've got I've got to read something out to you myself. I promised you before. So it's been Go a pleasure, it. mate. Take care, guys and girls. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. As always, Don Carlos says over at AEW Wrestling, stay safe and stay over. And we'll see you next time.